Tonight's lecture, bottom-up approach, a bottom-up approach to the rebuilding of Somalia, the Azania case, will focus on Somalia's recently formed semi-autonomous region, exploring the benefits and challenges that have come to the creation of Azania, and how these challenges are similar to and different from those facing the rest of Somalia. Tonight's program is part of a multi-day workshop currently ongoing at the Emory Abu Dhabi Institute, entitled Exploring the Somali Modern Nation State's Rise, Failure, and Reconstruction. We are very honored by the presence of Dr. Mohammed Abdi Gandhi, the president of Azania, and his willingness to speak tonight on his work here. President Gandhi will be introduced by Dr. Kenneth Menkhaus, Professor of Political Science at Davidson College. Professor Menkhaus' academic research focuses on development, conflict analysis, peace building, and political Islam in the Horn of Africa. In 1993-94, he served as a special political advisor in the UN operation in Somalia. And in 94-95, he was visiting civilian professor at the US Army Peacekeeping Institute. Professor Menkhaus has served as consultant for the UN, US, Army, uh, US government, non-governmental organizations, and is the author of many articles, chapters, book chapters, and monographs about the problems around state building processes in Somalia. Please join me in welcoming President Gandhi and Dr. Menkhaus. Thank you very much, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ken Minkhouse. I'm, I've been asked to serve as the moderator uh, for this evening. Uh, I will keep my remarks brief so that I can give the floor uh, to my colleague, Dr. Gandhi. Somalia today is the focus of three major initiatives by both uh, Somalis and the international community. One is uh, a massive uh, humanitarian response uh, to the worst famine in 20 years. Uh, a second is a counterterrorism initiative designed to combat the jihadist group Al-Shabaab, which controls uh, most of southern Somalia right now. Uh, the third is a very long and significant effort to revive the central state in Somalia, Somalia being the site of the longest running instance of complete state collapse uh, in the post-colonial era. It's now been 20 years without an effective central government in Somalia. The state building agenda is the topic of tonight's talk. And as you may know, uh, efforts to revive the central government in Somalia to date have not been very successful. We have a transitional federal government that is now in the seventh year of what was supposed to be a five year transitional period. It is struggling to build an even modest capacity in its civil service, and it's struggling to extend its authority beyond the capital Mogadishu. Frustration with the minimal success of the transitional federal government has led to renewed interest in a bottom-up approach to state building in Somalia, building on existing local administration, sometimes regional in scope, sometimes smaller, sometimes already well-established, like the, the, uh, the non-secessionist state of Puntland in the Northeast, in other cases, more aspirational uh, states that are in very modest early forms of formation. The debate in Somalia about the pros and cons of a building block approach or a bottom-up approach to state building is very, very lively. Uh, there are lots of reasons to support it. There are plenty of critiques of it. And tonight, I hope our discussion with Dr. Gandhi will give us a chance uh, to hear some of those ideas. This evening, we have the opportunity to hear from a speaker who has seen all sides of this issue. Dr. Mohammed Ab Abdi Mohammed, also known by his nickname, Professor Gandhi, is a leading intellectual and political figure in Somalia. He earned a bachelor's degree in Mogadishu in 1970, and then pursued an extensive period of advanced education in France, where he, learned, he earned a PhD in applied geography and a doctorate in history and ancient civilization. Most of his extensive publications, which include eight books, uh, are in the fields of history and anthropology. He has also been extensively engaged in Somali reconciliation, reconstruction, and politics since the early 1990s. This includes work with the civil society group Peaceline as a consultant to UN agencies, 
as a delegate to national reconciliation efforts, as Minister of Defense in the transitional federal government in 2009-2010, and now currently as President of the nascent regional administration, Azania, in the Transjuba area of southern Somalia, bordering Kenya. This is, for those of you who don't follow Somalia closely, a region of considerable turbulence right now. It's a stronghold of al-Shabaab. It's the site of armed clashes pitting Shabaab against a collection of anti-Shabaab militias. It's the site of a current Kenyan-backed military intervention just in the past 48 hours. It's the site of a major humanitarian crisis and it's a route for a massive flow of Somali refugees into the Dab refugee camp, which is now the third largest city in Somalia or Kenya. Either way, either way, it's 470,000 people in a refugee camp that was supposed to host no more than 90,000. This is, in other words, not an easy place for state building. Professor Gandhi will draw upon his experience there to speak to us about the opportunities and challenges of bottom-up state building. Professor Gandhi. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, I would like first to apologize <laughs> the standard of my good uh, English. <laughs> that means I speak so bad, huh? <laughs> so I, I hope that you follow me well. Um, so I will, I will start. Uh, member of uh, member of academics, representative of government of the United Arab Emirates, distinguished participant, ladies and gentlemen, I am thankful for the opportunity to address this gathering and express my gratitude and appreciation to the organizers. I salute many familiar faces present here, and I would like to thank New York University in Abu Dhabi for highlighting such an important topic. I trust that the discussion today will provide many thought and the idea for understanding how bottom-up approach can and do contribute to peace and stability in war-torn Somalia. Thanks for the opportunity to speak and the memorable experience of joining you here in this legendary panel. I have been asked to share my experience as bottom-up approach field practitioner from Somalia and the other hot spot about the role of grassroots engagement for co conflict prevention and post-conflict building stability, promoting inclusiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to speak about the formation and the process of Azania State of Somalia, which was emerged in consensus building and the bottom-up approach model, the state comprise three regions within Somalia, namely Lower Juba, Middle Juba, Gedo region with Somalia, bordering Ethiopia, Kenya, and the Indian Ocean, and the Lower Shabele by Bakol of Somalia. <coughs> Let me highlight to you the long consultation process, chronological step leading to the creating of a Zania state in Somalia, and I take this occasion, okay, this occasion to update you on the progress of the consultation process. The discussion under the concept of the creating a Zania state of Somalia have commenced 2008, taking into account the sensitivity involved and I started conversing with people of the three regions comprising Azania state of Somalia. The process followed by consultation step. So I will try to leave my uh, paper and I will try to speak my modest English. And I think when we started this process in 2008, 
We was in Djibouti and it was the time that we have the discussion between the IRS and uh, TFG. And at that time, it was Shabab who took over the town of Kismayo. And uh, this group of uh, extremists of Shabab, uh, there are another group named Kiamboni, and they, start, they, they started to fight to have the power of the town. So we was in Djibouti and we decided to go there and to convince the population not to follow them and also to try to conciliate them. So this process started for the first time at that point. So when we finish the process and we agree to form national government, and Sheikh Sharif was elected in uh, February. Uh, we, the Sheikh Sharif, president of, the, of Somalia, he asked me uh, that I was the minister of defense. He asked me to, to, to do plan to evacuate or to push the Shabab from these three regions from the south of Somalia. And for this reason, we contacted the Kenyan government. We discussed with them how they can help us to train uh, soldiers, to recruit a lot of young people from inside of the country, and to bring them to Somalia. But before to start that, we did consultation uh, inside uh, these three regions. But even if I came from the region, I discovered two things. The first, I think, things that maybe it will be also interesting for my colleague, the people who is living in this theory region, they never have conflict between them before 1991. Secondly, all the conflict that we had in this region, it was the outsiders who bring to this region. Huh? So when we discover this, and we continue the, this, uh, the consultation, we done for the first time 41 consultation. And the result of that, the people, they ask us uh, if we want to be together. They had a lot of conflict. And this conflict, the warlords who came to this area, they used names. For example, I did and Jess, when they come, they use Juba. And when Morgan he came, General Morgan, he used Jubalan. And when Barahir Ali came, they used uh, uh, Juba, Juba Valley Alliance. Valley Authority. Yes. Yeah. So uh, when, we, when we started to do this uh, reconciliation, the elders, the religious people, the civil society, they asked, uh, we must start with, with one beige, huh? so we don't use uh, the segregation, that they, the names that they use it, we don't want. And for that reason, we prepared name. Names that we have now in the region, and the names that we had in the historical uh, background of Somalia. So we choose 18 names, uh, 10 is names that we have today, like Wamo, like Gedo, like Desheg, like Bajun, like even Juba, like the river, uh, and uh, eight names that we have historically in the area, uh, like, or, or Somalia, because we had ancient names like Berberi, we have Bunt, we had uh, uh, land of uh, Spice, we had land of the uh, Terre de Dieu of God, uh, the, yes, the, the, the land of, of, of God, Azania, Zinj, etc. So when we discuss, they decide that we take as a temporary the name of Azania. Uh, and I think the, some, some people, they ask always uh, the name, uh, it come from where? I think it come from the time of uh, uh, the Greek of Egypt. Uh, of the time of Ptolemy, and it, it was, I think, the, the Claude Ptolemy who was uh, the first man who geograph who put in the map of Somalia in the area of Hafun until Hobio, the name of Azania. 
Also, I think some writers like Plin, he talk also about Azania and in this location. And I think also there are another uh, Mara seaman, huh? another seaman uh, who came from, from, from Egypt and he passed to Somalia, but we don't know his name. It is the secret of what we say, Bible of the Mer, Mer de l'Eritrea. Yes. yes. And, and all this, uh, or historian, or naturalist, or geograph, they already report this name, and it can be 2,000 to 2,500 years huh, ago. And we take as a temporary this uh, name until that we put all the Somalis uh, of the region together, or not all, the delegation, the, the candidate, Yes, yeah? Delegate, yes. Excuse me, excuse me. Huh? It's better for me to speak French, but. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, after that, uh, when we did this stage, we started to organize the elders. Huh? So for me, as an anthropologist or historian, I knew that we had 22 clan. Huh? But now I think we have more than 30 clan. Huh? So even we study to discover the people who is living in the area. And uh, we organize uh, the elders, we organize uh, the religious people, not the new one. Huh? But uh, the because uh, I don't know, I think all the people they know, the Somalis, they are Muslim, they are Sunni. And uh, if they are Sunni, we have also, we had uh, what we call uh, Sufi or confrere, and uh, this uh, thought that we have since very long time, we put them together. All the sheikh who was responsible for the diffuse, diffusion, 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 diffusion of the of the Islam, the education for the people to keep also uh, the Islam uh, 13 century and a half in Somalia. We also put them together and they had consul. The elders, they had consul. We organized the civil society, included professionals, uh, teachers, doctors, uh, uh, the people who is defending the minority, the women, and so on. So, so, so we put all the population of this area together. And I think for that, when we uh, touch in our in our in our way of thinking all all the sush, uh, all the category of of uh, of the society we organize we recruit first we recruit soldiers to train after that we try to get the last administrators like bc like dc who was nominated by the last legal government before the arrival of Shabab in the area, it was the time of Yusuf, we bring them to Kenya and we give them uh, uh, refreshment to, yes? A refresher course. To, to, comment on peut dire la pour lever leur connaissance, yeah? Consciousness raising, yes, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, So, and, and after that, uh, we organized a conference, the first conference, in 28 March until 4 July. And we had 400 delegation. And for this conference, we discuss three points. The first point, we prepare charter. Huh? And this charter we discuss we did amendment and we approve in that meeting. Huh? Second, we discuss about the power sharing. Huh? Because the problem of Somalia is the power sharing. <coughs> I think today we talk a lot about the 4.5 and so on. So, so this discussion, the, the, the people who came there, uh, civil society, diaspora, uh, religious people, elders, 
when we discuss, we say that we don't take 4.5 for two reasons. First reason, it was one time to get solution, but we have no solution until now. Second, if for these three reasons we use uh, 4.5, there are some clan who is living and some clan who is not. So we can give privilege for some clan who is not there and maybe we give this disadvantage for the people who is living uh, locally uh, the area. After that, the discussion continues. So how we can do the power sharing uh, and we decide at the end to not to use the clan uh, system or 4.5, but we have 15 district and we try to take district by district and to study who is living there. So we choose district with the people who, who live in that area. So we collect the people as a, as a, as a region, huh? as a region, a region, but not as the clan can, can in, interfere, but it's not the clan who is very important. Every citizen or citizen who is living in that area, he have right. And we decided there are no majority, there are no minority. But all the people who is living there, they must have representativity in two chambers that we decided. The first chamber is the chamber for the MBs. And the second is for the elders. So we decide uh, all the clan or all the group who is living there, they can, be, they can get representative or in the chamber of the MBs or in the chamber of the elders, or in the administration of the government. Yeah? And we decided that so, there are some memory in the mind of the Somalis all, it is the gun. Yeah? Sometimes there are some group who have gun, they say we are more strong, we must have all, and so on. So we say we don't know who is majority, who is strong, who is not. But there are no majority, minority. The other things that we discuss also, there are some districts that we have one clan. And there are some districts that we have 10 clan. If there are districts that we have 10 clan different, we give 10 uh, mem the member in the parliament or in the, in the, in the Gurti or uh, in, the, in the elder's house. Huh? If, you, if, if we have in that district one clan, we give one repre representative. Yeah. Uh, and when we, when we decide that, we say according to the variation of the clan uh, of each district, we distribute number. Uh. For example, Kismayo, we say that there are 17 uh, clan, so we give nine, for example. Hagar, we say that, that there are one or two group, we put two. Uh, Garbare, we put three. Baladhao, we put three. Uh, uh, Jamame, there are a lot of groups, we give, I don't know, four, five, six. Jilib Sem. Bu'ale, we have four clan, we give them four. So every area that we have, many group, not same origin, but different, they must have their representativity or in the house of the embis or in the house of the Gurti or in the future government that we will have. Huh? The third, it was to choose uh, someone who can lead the movement. And when we decide these three points, we approve the charter, we discuss and agree how to do the power sharing and to choose who can lead the movement after that, we go back to the country and we went for the consultation to take these three points to discuss with the people. Huh? So we was in the jungle or in the refugee camp or uh, in the area that we liberate or in the area that there are no shabab. And we was in this consultation 110 days. And all the amendment all the points that we wanted to add it, we bring it back 
and we did a small meeting that we had 271 persons composing the three component of uh, eld uh, uh, elders, religious people, and civil society. It was 8, 9 June uh, this year. And after that, we organized the second big conference. And we came back and we discussed in that conference also, we decide three points. The first point, we say, I, I want to go back a little bit. Huh? As you know, I think today, uh, Fauzia, she talked about the 4.5 and the statue of the woman. Huh? <laughs> so we decide 65 MBs. But we say for the 65 MBs, six it will be for the women. And uh, 59, it will be for the men and women. Huh? To avoid that, because we have uh, some habitude, and especially some group or some clan who is living there, they don't want it to see women. Huh? So the women, they cannot be in the, in the, in the, in the parliament, they cannot be in the power, so they must be away. Huh? So we say that you cannot touch six uh, uh, MBs, it will be for the women. So the women, with uh, the, the consultation, they get more for. So now, for the 65, they have 10, uh, the women, in this environment. Uh, uh. So in, that, uh, in the last conference that we done, 25 July to 30 July, we decide also three uh, points. The first point, it is to transmit the name of the MBs and also to transmit the name of the elders. And I think if we can go a little bit, when, when we say elders, when we say clan, I think <coughs> there are some definition uh, that means the, the, we can be group, but we, when we talk about clan, uh, you must have land, you must have uh, 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 chief, you must have a uh, symbol that you le mark on the sur les animaux. So, what the whole the mark on the, mark. On the animal, and, and there are a lot of oh. criteria, six criteria to be clan. So, if you feel these six uh, points, you can be clan, huh? so we did criteria how we can uh, be clan or no. Huh? So they, 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 they transmit the, the names of Gurti, they transmit the name of, uh, of the embis, and also we decided the next meeting, it will be inside Somalia, and in that case, we take, you, can you help me? Serma, come on, you can't forget Serma. What are you talking about? Serma. Swearing, huh? Or swearing it. <laughs> we, do, we do the swearing in Somalia, and also we form the last stage of the government. So I, I did this summary, and I wait your questions, and maybe we can, we can, we can discuss, huh? But I apologize another time. The, L'état de mon, mon anglais. Hein? Ça, c'était parfait. Ouais. Parfait. <laughs> Merci bien. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going I'm to begin our conversation with a, a few questions of my own and then open it up to the floor, if you, if you don't mind. That's the power of the, power of the moderator. The, the first thing I'd like to, to uh, observe is, for those of you who are not familiar with the Somali political process, uh, the extraordinary amount of time and energy that was devoted to the process. The, the fundamental problem in Somalia in, in the context of a collapsed state is a question of authority and representation. This question, who has the right to represent whom uh, before you can hold an election, is very, very problematic. And so what we've seen in every single region where there has been an attempt to form an administration, an enormous amount of time devoted to consultation uh, and, and to the question of what is the most appropriate means of representation. And the fact 
that the Jubaland or the, or the Azania uh, administration has opted to ultimately uh, select its representatives by district as opposed to a, a, a direct clan based uh, formula is is significant. That's a that's a that's an innovation I think in the Somali context that's that's quite interesting. Let me ask the first uh, just a couple of of quick short questions. The first one is very self interested uh, and has nothing to do with Somalia per se, um, and that is this: you've gone from being an academic to a civil society activist to a minister in a government to a president in a regional administration. You've, 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 you've entered the fray in politics, and politics in Somalia as elsewhere is very much a contact sport. Um, what have you learned about the strengths and weaknesses of academics who dare to wander into politics? <clears throat> I don't know if I can answer. Uh, uh, the, the <laughs> I cannot answer directly, but I think the evolution that you talk about, all they are circumstances, two, they are natural. Huh? That means I was, uh, and I am academic, and I believe uh, still, and I was in the civil society also, and I believe, but uh, I went to the politics when the Ethiopian army invade Somalia, and from that, I couldn't come back. Huh? Mm. <laughs> so, so I went, we liberate the country, I went to the government, we had a lot of problem, uh, the academic was better, the civil <laughs> society was better, <laughs> I had a lot of diffic difficulties uh, to work uh, and especially to work as a minister of defense, because I am anti-militarist. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I don't like the violence, but uh, the person who nominated, he said me that even me, I didn't knew anything about, uh, about, uh, um, about the military uh, action, but uh, in, the, in the time of the ICU, ICU he sharp, so it is easier, but it was not easy at all for me, and I was not happy for that, and I didn't accept when I was nominated, but I done what I can. Uh, and after that, I think I get some a good experience, because historically, my historical background, I think some people they know here, I was against federalism. I am still against 4.5. I am against the clan system and the way that we use it as a politics. But in the time that I was in this government, I understood that if we want to liberate Shabab from the country, we cannot liberate from Mogadishu to the region. So I decided to go to the field and uh, to work in that way to, to, to contribute. And in the beginning, when I started to work, when my colleague, they saw that maybe the program is, it, it can be concrete and it can advance well, all they was against at the end, yeah? Because many of my colleagues, they want to have the Somalia the way that she is now, uh, static quo, to say always we are fighting Shabab, we are not fighting, Amisom they stay, the people who is responsible, they are in the tanks to go to their office, to go to their home. Uh, but I, for that reason, I say that or I will go back uh, to my academic uh, zone and I will I will come back. Huh? Don't worry. But I decided to go also to do what I can from the grassroots and to go up. And that I think the change that I have in my in my in my feeling that I believe now we cannot do anything except by. Uh, going to the region, you can call building block, 
you can call what we can, we can say, but in the area that I am working, it's not one clan area. Uh, you can get everyone. You can get a variety. It is the region who is more rich culturally. You can get a lot of idiom locally. You can get pastoralists. You can get uh, agriculturists. You can get uh, uh, fisheries. And I think it is more or more or rich for me to work in that area than to work in one area that we have only camula. So uh, I think that, that, that what I can say as uh, experience to my colleague who believe maybe that we must go to the central government, maybe the way that I was before, that we abandon yeah. and we go back to the region and we try to build and I wanted to underline that I am unionist. I am not separatist. I want Somali one, but the way that I wanted to reach, it's not from Mogadishu to the village, but it is from the village to Mogadishu. Huh? You, had, you had a year to two years inside the transitional federal government as a minister. Uh, you've just made reference to the fact that some of the top leadership in the transitional federal government likes the current situation the way it is. Uh, they're, they're not actually advancing the state building process. Uh, can you explain that to us? What, why? Because that's counterintuitive to most people. Most people assume that politicians are power seekers and power maximizers. And here you're, you're, you're describing a government uh, that is intentionally deinstitutionalizing itself. What's the motive behind that? Why? Why? Vous dites en français. Oh, mon Dieu. Uh, <laughs> pourquoi est-ce que les meneurs de la TSG uh, ne, ne fait pas un effort de, 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 de build to build? Help me out here. Oui, oui, oui. Je construire. De, 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 de faire. De, de bâtir. De bâtir, merci. Oui, Ça oui. fait longtemps depuis que j'ai parlé en français. Oui, oui. Uh, de bâtir le, le, le gouvernement. Pourquoi? Pourquoi il ne veut pas? Il veut pas. Vous, oui. vous avez dit oui. qu'il ne veut pas. Parce que moi, ce que je peux. Oh, I ah, think you did. <laughs> yes. Ah. Uh, for example, the, the, um, I don't say that this or this or this, but I will tell you that uh, that you know, uh, when we come to Mogadishu, and I was the Minister of Defense, we had 14 district of Mogadishu, huh? and when I left, we had five. So we progress, hmm. and we are only in Mogadishu, and we don't do anything. We try to build national army, no national army, militia arms. The, it is the warlords that who lead them before, who have, you know. So there are no volunteer, volunteer? Yeah, will. Volunteers. There are no will. Will to do that. So uh, what I understood that uh, I think in Somalia we have no government 21 years. Huh? And I think the human being, they afraid the change. Hmm. And we was 21 years in war. And this war and the status quo that we heritate from this war, everyone he think that if we change, maybe it's start to change. Maybe the president, he think that if we come from the region and we liberate the country, he will go. He cannot stay. So we want money, we want weapon, we sell to Shabab. So for me, the, 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 the team that I was with, I don't say this or that, they want the status quo. Huh? Mm. They don't want to change. Yeah. So it's, for me, if I wanted to do something, I must go to, for the change. Yeah? So I, I, I was in the government, and now I, I am in the village. And I will continue. And, and maybe at the end, I don't stop in the three region. But for me, the objective is the Somali uh, nation, one. And we go to Bay, to Bokol, to Lower Shabelle, maybe to Mogadishu. And we liberate the hostage of Mogadishu also, and we go. Uh.
Je ne sais pas si on comprend non, ça, ou pas. Non, c'est parfait. The, the, the interesting point here in terms of state building is that we often, those of us on the outside, often presume that a fragile or a failed state is a problem of capacity, that uh, the leaders are willing but not able. And so we provide them capacity uh, to build the state. And that's a, that's a tame problem. Uh, but what you're describing is a wicked problem. That's where the leadership has neither the will nor the capacity uh, to build the state, that they've actually got vested interests in uh, the project of state building but not the success of state building because there's, a, there's an economy that is developed around, around the status quo, which is a very discouraging observation uh, mm -hmm. for us. You're implying that the uh, Azania state um, is, is at this point uh, divorced from the transitional federal government. There's no formal relationship at this point between the two, or is there, uh, do they recognize Azania as one of the regional entities with which they must work? Uh, this program, it, it was the governmental program. We negotiate with Kenya, but when, as I, I, I say before, when we start to be visible, huh, we had soldiers, we had administration, we had elders, we had all the people, you know the Somalis, they start to talk. They say, they say that, for example, when we recruit the soldiers, we didn't use 4.5. We say that who wanted to fight Shabab, you come. You can be anywhere from Somalia. So they start to talk to say that, oh, this uh, uh, military, they are one clan. We send the people to, to, to check. It's not true. And the number of the soldiers that we have it is the minorities who is majority in the, in the, in the, in the army. Huh? They, they say also that uh, it is Kenyan who have ambition to take how I can ex ex The Kenyan, we had agreement, they have in danger. The Shabab, they come, they cross the border. Our land also is occupied by Shabab. So we have a mutual, uh, um, mutual interest. interest. Yeah. So we, we wanted to liberate our area, and we want also to protect from them the, 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 the danger of, 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 of the ter terrorist and, and, and extremist. But if I am for the Somali uh, unity, this propaganda, I cannot, I cannot they say yeah, that yeah. it's Kenya who, is, who have ambition. It's not true. It's agreement between we can verify. Yeah, we use it, the, uh, the agreement that we done between, it done between Yusuf and the Kibaki, that we do cooperation in every sector, huh? mm. administration, military, police, and everything. And we use this, uh, this uh, cooperation, but uh, the authority who was with me before, because in the beginning we was two for this program. One was the president and me. And when the propaganda started, the president he desert. Hmm. And now we have no, we have no uh, uh, good intent. He tried to stop because he see also we cannot stop. We will go, uh, we will go. And I think he, no one can be uh, out, invite. For example, the region that we are, we are Somalis. We cannot be Martin Logaman Karakov. You, you, you see in French, yeah? in, in English. How do I get to the Somalia? How do I get to the Somalia? Yes. Ah. We, have, we have our devoir, huh? our right, right to do what is right for the Somalis, what we think is good for the Somalis. So if there are someone who is not, who don't agree, I don't care the hierarchy. Huh? It can be up, down, but we go. Huh? But Have now the, the relation is not good. <laughs> the relation is not good. The, the uh, spokesperson for the transitional federal government yesterday or today uh, issued a, a, a statement uh, saying that uh, Kenyan forces coming into Somalia 
uh, in pursuit of Shabab um, were not necessary and was an infringement on Somali sovereignty. Have you taken a, a formal position on the, the, the offensive by the Kenyan forces into Azania? Uh, for, for your information, already our forces, they are inside, huh? No, I know yours yes, are, but there's are inside, a Kenyan but, but, forces but also. The Kenyan, the Kenyan, I think they have right to defend them, themselves. For example, the Shabab, they come, they come inside to Kenya. We didn't take decision now to take position, but they take kidnapped from the uh, uh, refugee camp. Right. They wanted to lamo, they kidnap one French woman and one British woman, and they killed one man. So uh, the Kenyan, they, are, they, they, they have right, they put all their soldiers okay. to the border. But normally, it is our soldier who is inside. And I think it, it happened when I was leaving now. Yeah. So we will see. Huh? But I think it's not occupation. If it is occupation, we refuse. Right. So what you're, the, I think the English term for, for, for uh, the, the legal term in English is in hot pursuit. You're saying that, they, that, they're, that it's justifiable in hot pursuit of Shabab in response to en, these crimes. En, fran, en, fran, en français, français c'est quoi? Oui. C'est quoi? J'ai aucune idée. Oui. Le perçu chaud. Er, 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 <laughs> yeah. Le chasse. Yeah. Le droit de poursuit. Voilà, okay. Le droit de poursuit. Oh, oui, oui, merci oui, bien. Oui, hein, oui, oui, le droit de poursuit. <laughs> Ils ont le droit, à mon avis. Okay. Parce que, uh, I think, Kenya, they live in, 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 in tourism. Hein. So all the area that we attack, it is the area that they get all their uh, resources. Mm. Huh? So I think if they, if they act or now what we know, they bomb yeah? no, by I'm air. Gonna... But if they cross and they follow, uh, I think, uh, I don't know. Huh? But I think there are no, there are no problem. Huh? OK. Yes. I'm going to ask one me, more question no and problem, open huh? it up to the, to the floor. Your model of, uh, of, of regional entities in Somalia uh, by defining it in terms uh, as, a, as an, ad, an, ad, an administrative unit and not a clan state or an ethno state implies that any Somali from any part of Somalia has the right to live in Azania and make full claims on politics and economic and residency rights. Was that a formal part of the acceptance by the local representatives? Um, because that's, that's quite an innovation in Somalia for them to essentially be saying, ahlan wa sahlan, welcome. Anyone here, can, anyone in any Somali can live in Azania um, because you, unlike many other states, you haven't defined it in clan terms. In fact, you've, you've explicitly refused to define it in clan terms. C'était une question difficile. Non, peut-être que si j'ai compris, j'aurais bon. OK. Mais... Pour nous, c'est le premier step pour libérer la Somalie. Nous libérer ces trois régions et nous ne stop. pas. Chaque Somali who wanted to be there because we have, maybe we will arrive 37 groups. I don't know if I can use clan or group. Huh? Even the, the, the nature of the uh, biological, uh, I don't believe that the cl Somali clan is biologic. It is interesting. Huh? Yeah. Well, in many uh, cases, they're also moi, invented. Moi, yeah. moi, moi, je I think that uh, for us, this region, it is three region, Somali region. Any Somali who wanted to fight with us to liberate is welcome. Any Somali who wanted to participate for the development of this region, he come for us. We don't say that he is from that clan. It is that clan who is, uh, uh, have right more than that. We wanted to use uh, what we call uh, uh, democracy, representative, representativity, Represent democracy, yeah. and, uh, uh, and uh, participant democracy. Huh? So in the local and, uh, and the district level, it will be participant. And in the level of the region, it will be representative. And uh, everyone who can go to any district to be there, 
it will be like the other because our objective is not the three region. Our objective is the Somali united. Huh? So any one of Somalis, and even now, any one non-Somali who believe what we believe, who is not Somali, he can help us, he can come, and he can be with us also. Huh? There are no, there are no okay. obstacles. And we, have, we don't say it belongs to that group or that group. Huh? Very good. Hello. Yes. My name is Mobish Rabani. I'm an independent researcher and writer. Maritime piracy is something that affects this region a lot that is coming outside Somalia itself. What is the measures that you are going to be taking in or anything that you are working on to counter maritime piracy because these pirates, the ransoms that they get are fueling terrorism itself. Plus, there are a lot of people from different countries that are uh, currently hostage in uh, Somalia itself because of these pirates. Is there anything you can do to help us, you know, get them to negotiate or get them released? The, I think the problem of the piracy, uh, we have some uh, opinion about you uh, that uh, it make handicap for us and handicap for the international community and we are ready to work with the international community to stop that. But I think it is very important to understand why we have piracy in Somalia. And if you allow to me, I want to explain. And after that, if we want to get solution, we will see this problem and we try both sides to be very hard with them but at the same time to have the other side solution. I remember for the first time when the Somali uh, central government collapsed, all the countries, they send their ship to do illegal fish, and even sometimes they don't respect the season of the fishing for certain uh, type of animal. Huh? Yeah. Uh, uh, so at that time, the Somalis, uh, the, I think they are very minority, the people who live in, in, the, in, in, the, in the fishing. Huh? So I wanted to harpoon these sheep, they have gun. They was shutting the people who so the Somalis, if they come near to the place that they are uh, fishing, they, they was killing. Huh? And from that time, we, st uh, we had, uh, you know, there are a lot of immigration from Africa to go to Europe. Huh? So we had three lines. Huh? In West Africa, we wanted to Senegal, to Mauritania, to go to Spain. The other group, they was going from the black African and they was going until Sudan, Libya, and they take boats to go to Italy. Other group, they was from Ethiopia, from Zaire, from Kenya, they was crossing Somalia to go Buntland and to cross the Gulf, Gulf of, of Aden to come to, to the Arab Peninsula. And at that time, the Somalis who have problem of fishing with these boats, they start to take the people to go, uh, to transport the people who wanted to go to, to Arabia and to take money. And when they get the money, they start to have gun. And when they have the gun, they start to shut the boat. They take, they kidnap. And it, it, it grow up like that. Huh? So I think we try to struggle against them, but also we must have proposal for the social life. We cannot say we fight uh, without any, propos any proposal of, of life to change, to do reintegration in the society. So uh, I agree that, and we do all our effort to struggle 
against the, 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 the Birat. And also for your information, I cannot say all, but the majority of the piracy they have relation with Shababa. Huh? Faisal Roble with IASA. Let me just give a quick praise to Mr. Gandhi in terms of his slow and gradual public engagement which he described to us to really bring on board many diverse groups. I wish the TFG just engaged that kind of inclusive process, uh, even for a bigger issue like adapting as opposed to drafting something like the constitution in Nairobi and then just saying we will adapt to this constitution such and such a date. I, I very much welcome and I'm very much uh, uh, enlightened by, by your public engagement process of several uh, layers. I also welcome the bottom-up approach as long as that is maintained in the true sense of the framers of that concept in the old geographic uh, 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 approach. A direct question that probably may be your foreign question is to me, are you as the president of the new Azania prepared to accept international aid both in soft as well as in hard form, including military aid to defeat Al-Shabaab. And you have to take into context that we are sitting in Abu Dhabi, which is the center of Arab influence and power, and the fact that the TFG leader is come here, get money all the time, uh, as well as uh, it's, uh, you know, the American audience here, people like myself, who want to know that, are you prepared to accept military aid from outside forces to defeat this evil uh, group of Al-Shabaab? In my view, uh, I think we can, we can struggle as a Somalis to liberate our country. Yeah? But we need help. The help that we need, if we have uh, a, a economical support, if we have weapon, if we have uh, training for the Somalis, not only to fight, but also to, to come back normal, I think we need, we need our, our bra Arab, Arab brothers to, to help us for that. We need the European and the American to help us that. But I think we don't need uh, army from the outside to liberate our, our, our country. I think we, are, we have enough, enough, uh, yes, uh, enough, and enough also people who want to, to, to stand up uh, and to get their right. I'm very glad to have uh, President Gandhi here with me as old friend who we have shared work with him in during the, uh, the Djibouti peace process and we were in a technical committee. So it's now the President of Azani. I don't know what I will do myself. <laughs> uh, my, uh, 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 we have learned that in the last 20 years uh, while working in Somali communities and that through the uh, tri many trials of uh, state uh, formation processes, not to say uh, that process is good or that process is not good. Uh, we major thing is with the result is, final result is an outcome. Uh, so uh, let us give uh, hope that the process that Professor Gandhi is doing is, will end up in a very successful manner. But my question is, uh, you are the major uh, you are in major conflict with al Shabaab, who are controlling the area that you would like to establish the administration. Do you have any non shabaab Islamic groups who are also against Shabaab in your administration? Or do you have excluded? Today we have been talking about the process of exclusion. Or you have excluded all others and you have opted for a traditional Islamic scholars or the Sufi scholars that you are very an expert uh, in recruiting them. Thank you. Abdurrahman, uh, Islamist, we have, I don't know if we can say Islamist for the Sufi, huh? but the Islamist that you know, we have some of them, even if we have no uh, good relation, who fight beside us, 
against Shabab, who was Shabab before, huh? and I still they are Shabab, like Yambonia, but uh, we have no uh, uh, other groups. Huh? The group that we have who is Islamist, we didn't use the name of a Sunnah al-Jama'ah because it take, I think, for the Somalis, bad connotation. Because in general, if you are a normal Muslim or normal uh, religious man, Christian, Jewish, and you are normal, you are normal. Huh? But when we was normal, we were saying that the people there are Sunnah al-Jama'ah, but now it is like political party. Huh? But we use other names for these religious people, like Ash'arit, like Sufi, and also we accept also, and we have many others who don't declare themselves, but who is moderator huh? and who is against the Shabab. Huh? My name is Abdul Rizak. What is the agenda your government in future was in a sunny government? Second question, now we have in Somalia First many, question, I'm sorry, yeah. First, First question. question, it is what's the agenda in your government, Azania? Ah, agenda. Secondly, now we have in Somalia many administrations. Somaliland, Putland, Gelmudik, Hemanheb, Azania, and Banadri State. How we build the unity? That's my question. The first question, agenda to liberate the country, and after that, to go to the development uh, and the, the, the consolidation of, of peace, consolidation of peace and uh, sustainable development. Uh. So I think I will, I, will, I will answer for the first part. Agenda uh, the unity. The unity. Yeah, how do, how do okay. Uh, so I think uh, I don't want to go in detail. Uh, but we have charter for the TFG, uh, federal government. And this charter, he said that two region and more, they can organize themselves to form one administration. And this administration, it will be under the federal government. And I think that is the principle. That's the principle. But you say, if there are beasts, we say it's good, even if they have no the condition to be, uh, to be uh, administration like the charter. Mm -hmm. If, for example, uh, 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 Galmuduk, uh, they, they do beasts, we say that it's good. Everyone who can do anything, we can build and we put all beside everyone and we go to the Somali unity. Huh? So we can see in two, 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 two ways. Huh? One way it is to respect the charter. The second, to build the peace or to, to establish the peace. So every single district or region who succeed to, to, to fix peace, uh, uh, I think it's good because when we fix, we go uh, small by small to pacify the, the all, 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 all Somalia. And it will be also good to, to see in the future the new Somalis uh, that we hope to see. Okay, my, my name is Markus Höhne. I'm working at the Max Planck Institute for Social Anthropology in Germany. I have two short questions. The first one is, how do you assure the legitimacy of your administration? Are you basically claiming basic, a traditional process of legitimating your government, like from sheer and traditional authority consultation, or do you envision something like elections? And in which period? And the second uh, question is, do you uh, see any possibilities to talk with Al-Shabaab? Because as we also know from Ken Menkhaus and others, Al-Shabaab constitute a considerable force in much of southern Somalia. And I believe you don't rule or you don't control territory and people just, just by force. So there must be also some sympathy towards Al-Shabaab and particularly in the area where you want to establish Hassania. I believe that Al-Shabaab has a followership. So do you see any possibility to integrate some of these people who want to support Al-Shabaab into your administration and to talk with Al-Shabaab? Or do you think it's only 
the only way to deal with Al Shabaab is by force. Uh, the legitimation, uh, our legitimation, come from the people. Huh? Legit the legitimacy. We don't ask Sheikh Sharif to recognize us, but our legitimation it come from the village, from the elders, from the civil society, from the people in the region, huh? and we have their confidence to go ahead. So the legitimacy come from the people. Huh? Uh, about the Shabab, I think in the first conference that we have, I did a bill. Huh? The Shabab, they are two group and two group. Huh? Two group, Muhajir, Ansar, immigrant, and uh, supporters, or I don't know, supporters? Yeah, Ansar. Yeah. Uh, locals. Yes. Yeah. So the immigrants, they are foreigner, and Ansar, they are Somalis. So you have these two divisions. In the Somalis themselves, there are two categories. There are categories who are very dangerous, related to Al Qaeda, extremists. They don't accept that you talk with them. Uh, but for us, I was in the peace process for me in Djibouti. And the peace process that we was in Djibouti, we say that we establish the security, but always the dialogue will be open. Uh. So for us, any Shabab who want to abandon the violence, the extremism, the door is open. Huh? The young people who la how we mislead, mislead, mislead. Yes, yes. We, 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 we try to to organize for them, uh, to to do demobilization for them, to get formation for them, to reintegrate them in the society. So we have a lot of program and opinion, and the door is open. Huh? But people like Godene, um, Afghan, uh, maybe Robo, I don't know. Huh? Uh, it's very difficult for them or Hassan Turki to, to have confidence with, with us. And we have no also confidence with them. But they, they, they guide the Somalis to mistake road. So the people who wanted to abandon that road and to come with us, uh, we will receive well. Huh? Well, I have to confess uh, in, in full disclosure that uh, the region that Professor Gandhi uh, is, is looking to build an administration in uh, is a second home to me. I lived in the Juba Valley before the war. Uh, I worked there during the famine in 91 and UNISOM in 93. I have a lot of old friends, I've, I've, some of whom are now in refugee camps. Uh, from there, and so success in that particular part of Somalia um, has a special place in my heart, um, and I certainly wish you Nasib uh in your work. <laughs> thank, thank you. Uh, with that, we're going to close this evening's uh, festivities. I'd like to thank you all for some excellent questions and some fantastic translating. Um, I think we've learned uh, that I'm not a professional translator. Uh, wasn't asked to do that, actually. And I'd like to ask you to join me in thanking Professor Gandhi for a very enlightening talk this evening. Yeah.